Hey guys, what is up? It's Sector here back again with another video. With the official iPad OS being released, I thought I would go back to review iPad OS, and through this, I hope to answer the question of whether or not just with iPad OS and a few hardware add ons like a smart keyboard and an Apple Pencil, could you technically replace a laptop? So, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. So starting off, one of the main things about iPadOS is of course its file system combined with the new Safari and its download manager. Now the file manager has existed since iOS 11, but iPadOS is where it is getting serious. Now currently with iPadOS, it is possible to upload a file in some website, then the website converts it to whatever other thing you want it to, and you can download that file directly back to your iPad. And all of that without the use of a computer, and the whole process becoming more of what you could do on an actual laptop. Of course, not everyone is going to do this, but this does show the power of the download manager and a new file system. And of course, with that file that you have downloaded, you can now also manipulate it and put it into different folders, duplicate it, compress it, or edit it in different apps. In addition, you can even plug a regular USB drive or SD card from a camera into it, and the files app will recognize it, which means that you can also manipulate it as well. If you're a photo or video editor, you can also directly import it into your app that you use to edit photos or videos. With the new Safari, all the websites will now default into opening in desktop mode versus before when you had to request it. Now it is not perfect and some things might still look a little funny, but for the most part you're able to get near desktop experiences. With the addition of the Apple Pencil, it could give you more precision and act like a mouse. Or if you want to, you can even plug in a mouse of your choice, wired or wireless. If you actually want to find out how, I will link a video in the description of a tutorial I made on it. Anyways, going back to the video, you could also then get a keyboard case or just an external keyboard. Overall, this means that on websites, you could theoretically get away with just using your keyboard or mouse and never have to touch the screen. There's still some limits on websites that work well on the iPad, but for websites like Google Docs and overall just a whole Google Suite, it is perfectly optimized and Apple even showed it off at their keynote, which means that it already has decent support and everything will continue to get better. If you're a student or someone who just have to work with a lot of web browsing and writing, you should be perfectly fine replacing your laptop with your iPad. This of course also includes just general browsing social media, emails, and consuming media, which is actually going to be better compared to a laptop because the newer iPads have a 120Hz ProMotion display. Of course, with the addition of the new updated multitasking system, all of these features that I mentioned above should work even better. If you're someone who is a graphic designer, the iPad will work great as well since the Apple Pencil is absolutely amazing, and there are also dozens of apps that you can try that serve like professional grade graphic design software, or at least close to it. If you draw a lot, the Apple Pencil might not be able to replace those expensive welcome drawing tablets, but it is always getting better and in a few years, it could potentially reach that point. If you're a video editor, you can try apps like LumaFusion that work almost like professional video editing softwares, and with a new file system, the importing process will also be a lot simpler and easier as well straight from your SD card. But of course, with both of these, it also largely depends on what exactly you are doing. Right now, I'm just making general assumptions, but you will need to test it out yourself to see if it meets your needs or not. Of course, there's always downsides to everything. The only two downsides that I could say of using an iPad is first because for some creative professionals, the iPad simply does not provide those software. Currently, you really can't do any programming on the iPad, and as mentioned earlier, video editing, photo editing, or any other sort of graphic design workload might still require some parts that can only be found on the actual computer software. And other downsides, of course, is that you might be more used to a professional desktop class OS. For example, although you can use a mouse, the right-click functionality is really missing in iPadOS, and dragging all the apps to multitask could also be awkward at times. And overall, since iPadOS is still technically a mobile software, everything requires more touch, and that might be a problem for some people who are more used to traditional operating systems. So overall, I really think that for most people, the iPad is a great device, and that could honestly be used for school or work. However, for some extreme creative professionals, or just people who prefer a more traditional desktop operating system, the iPad OS might be a little bit too limited. So I would recommend everyone to at least try it instead of just reading about it since you never know whether or not it could fulfill your needs until you try it out yourself. Anyways, I make these videos every single week. So if you would like to see more tech videos just like this, make sure to subscribe and click on that notification bell. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like. 
this is it for today's video and i will see you guys all in the next one